This video was produced at the request of Écoscience Sud Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur and powered by Play Azure Prod. It was co-scripted with Marc Antonini, CNRS Research Director at the I3S Laboratory, a CNRS and University of Côte d'Azur laboratory in France. Welcome back to Science Click. Today, what can we store in DNA? With the rise of computing, our society has come to rely more heavily on data storage. Photos, videos, music, text, all these files kept on our personal computers and smartphones, but mostly in data centers, represent several trillion gigabytes, a quantity that continues to grow and which would take billions of years to download. If we stored them on DVDs, they would form a pile stretching far higher than the moon. To store all these files, data centers consume colossal amounts of resources and energy. They require huge buildings, hundreds of billions of liters of water for cooling, and can have a carbon footprint equivalent to that of an entire city. Digital infrastructure as a whole emits approximately as much greenhouse gas as all air traffic. It is estimated that 60 to 80% of all stored files are virtually never read or used. We call this cold data, which is stored away without anyone accessing it. It encompasses archives, old emails, legal or administrative documents, files that data centers must conserve all the same. Today, we are faced with an exponential increase in such stored data. For several decades, researchers have been wondering whether this cold data could be stored in a more passive and efficient way. One idea, proposed in the 1950s by Richard Feynman, would be to take inspiration from living beings. Indeed, all living beings have tiny storage spaces. In almost every cell of our body is kept our genome, a kind of file that contains all the instructions necessary for our development, such as the color of our eyes or our blood type. For a human being, this file amounts roughly to one gigabyte of information, the equivalent of a movie in standard quality. It is stored physically in the form of a molecule, a collection of atoms, DNA. DNA is essentially a two meter long string made up of smaller molecules, nucleobases, which exist in four versions, A, T, G, and C, and which form a sort of alphabet in which our genome is written. In our cells, DNA is curled up on itself and contained in a tiny nucleus of a few micrometers, a storage 100,000 times more compact than a traditional SD card. So could we take inspiration from DNA to store our files more efficiently? Since 2013, it is now possible to store information, images or any other type of file on DNA. In this video, we will see together how this works. Put simply, a computer file is a very large number. To store text, for instance, we code each letter and character with a number and assemble these numbers in a sequence. To store an image, the amount of red, green and blue in each pixel is quantified and these numbers are put one after the other, pixel after pixel. Storing a file thus amounts to physically encoding a number. The first step is encoding. Computers use electricity. The voltage may be either low or high and can thus be used to represent two digits, zero and one. These two digits are enough to encode any number using the binary counting system and thus store any file. The number nine, for instance, is written in binary one, zero, zero, one. On the other hand, DNA is a sequence of four bases, A, T, G, and C, which can be interpreted as four digits, 0, 1, 2, 3. We call this quaternary. An advantage of quaternary is that it uses half as many digits as binary to represent the same number. In quaternary, the number 9, for instance, is written 2, 1. To store a file in the form of DNA, we must therefore start by translating from the language of computers, binary, to the language of DNA, quaternary. 
In theory, it is a mere conversion of numbers, but it is necessary to take into account biochemical constraints, given the fact that we want to create a molecule and find an encoding method that is robust to noise and errors. After encoding, the second step will be to create the DNA molecule to store our file. This is called synthesis. This DNA is inspired by biology but has no biological use. It is just a physical object that we build to hold our data. Thanks to molecular biology, this is possible and researchers are able to synthesize DNA molecules. In practice, we cut the file into several shorter strands and synthesize multiple copies of these strands to cross-check information and avoid errors. Finally, the last step is to store our DNA strands. At first glance, the molecules that we synthesized already contain our file, but many external factors risk degrading them. It is important to isolate the DNA from oxygen, humidity, light or heat which could make it unstable, introduce errors, or even break up the molecules. To do this, we synthesize dehydrated DNA, which is then placed inside a small airtight metal capsule protected from the outside. Once stored, this DNA can remain readable for thousands of years. The molecules in the capsule are so small that it can contain billions of strands and in theory store the contents of an entire data center. 100 million times denser than a standard hard drive, the equivalent of holding all the data in the world inside a shoebox. For the method to be useful, it is necessary to be able to extract files from this DNA if we wish to read them. Since the 1970s, researchers have developed technologies to read DNA. This is called sequencing. These techniques are generally used in biology. Starting from DNA molecules, they allow us to find the sequences of nucleobases which compose them. Researchers recently managed to read the DNA of a million-year-old mammoth. The same process can be used to read artificial DNA, and then by converting it back into binary, find the file that was encoded in it. Storing files on synthetic DNA has many advantages. Extremely compact, very stable over time, it is a passive storage solution which requires no energy to maintain. However, if this technology is not yet widespread, it is because it also has certain disadvantages. When reading a file, the sequencing process introduces errors, so it is currently necessary to store multiple copies of the same DNA strands to cross-check information and avoid errors. Another major issue is speed. Synthesizing or sequencing molecules takes far too long. In 2024, it takes two minutes to write a single nucleobase, billions of times slower than a traditional hard drive. The technology is also very expensive, around $1,000 per megabyte of synthesized DNA. Despite this, researchers are optimistic. We can already parallelize the synthesis process and achieve writing speeds of around one kilobyte per second. By reducing the margins of synthesis companies, as well as optimizing the whole process, it should be possible to reach $1 per gigabyte within a few years, and a speed roughly that of an internet connection. In any case, at present, the end goal of this technology would only be to store cold data, archives that must be preserved without having to be consulted regularly. At the Computing Signals and Systems Laboratory of Sophie Antipolis, a CNRS and University of Côte d'Azur laboratory in France, Marc Antonini is a CNRS Research Director and Laureate of the 2023 CNRS Innovation Medal. He directs the exploratory PEPR Molecule Archive, a research program dedicated to molecular data storage and aimed precisely at developing these techniques. Launched in 2022 and funded by France 2030, this program aims to explore various storage and sequencing technologies and accelerate synthesis methods to adapt existing systems to this new usage. Many topics are explored. For instance, it is important to define standards for structuring the data stored on the multiple strands of DNA. 
If a capsule contains billions, we must be able to quickly find the file we're interested in. It is also necessary to consider strategies for compressing files, and especially images, which constitute a large portion of all stored data. DNA takes a long time to synthesize, and compressing file size therefore remains crucial. At the I3S laboratory, Mark Antonini leads a team on this subject. He is president of the international group JPEG DNA, which aims at defining an image compression standard specific to DNA by 2025. Several of these projects are carried out in collaboration with actors in the field of archiving, such as the National Audiovisual Institute, the European Parliament, the French National Library, or Software Heritage. They try to set up real, large-scale testing. DNA data storage has become a research avenue at the crossroads of multiple disciplines. Microfluidics, signal theory, bioinformatics, genetic sequencing, and polymer chemistry. Several researchers and companies actively look into parallelization methods to speed up the synthesis process. Others are interested in how a file stored on DNA could be secured. Companies are already using artificial DNA as a marker to trace stolen items. Finally, some researchers are even interested in creating DNA computers, machines that could act at the molecular level to carry out calculations or solve problems, and in which electronic chips give way to enzymes and strands of DNA. Since the 1990s, results have been obtained, and in 2003, three researchers even managed to create the very first game of DNA tic-tac-toe.